Thursday, June 22nd, everybody. This is Fantasy Baseball on Deck. I am your guy, Austin, and we're going to do something a little uh, goofy and or irregular today um, with the help of my audience, you, uh, this person who loves me, cares about me, and uh, loves the overall content and uh, supporting me doing goofy baseball things. I have, uh, you know, since I guess December of uh, 2022, um, been on roster at another fantasy baseball website, uh, just creating like video content for their YouTube page. Uh, and funny enough or cool enough, they just got monetized and uh, I received my first ever fantasy baseball paycheck not too long ago too. That was really cool uh, with all things going on. And um, I've kind of taken on the... I don't want to do the exact same thing there that I do with you guys um, because I feel like, you know, if I'm going to go into the super nitty gritty, um, I'm going to do it with you because, uh, you know, that's kind of my thing with you guys and then do more like uh, game shows and like fun things, quick hits um, with the other website. So no, without further ado, I guess, and why this is going to be different, um, creating a little more of a, an engaging experience. I, uh, if you want to do a game show with me, I basically created a trivia game show um, that is going to uncover maybe a lot of the uh, important and independent stats um, kind of like surrounding uh, really important players that are either not available or available to you as fantasy baseball owners um, that are important to me. So if you would like to follow along, this is a good time to uh, pause the video, go down into the comments and click the link that actually takes you to the uh, quiz that I created. And we can kind of play it along, play along uh, together. Um, if not, if you don't want to just, just want to watch it, well, it'll be, the same experience, just you uh, not playing the game and getting a score. Anyways, I will continue. Um, so if I'm now I'm sharing my screen, maybe I will zoom in one. Maybe that'll look better over there. Uh, but anywho, let's uh, let's go ahead and hit the sucker. Play solo is what I'm going to do, and uh, each one is going to give yeah, like four minutes worth of time for just to be able to uh, talk through the options. So. It's been really uh, uh, broadcasted, very popular as of late, that Luis Arias, uh, 40, about 44% through the season, is still hitting right around 400. He's uh, floating like floating around 400 batting average uh, every other day. So he hit 400, uh, or was at 400 just a couple days ago. Um, after yesterday's game, he's dropped down to still a staggering three, uh, 398 average. So the overall question is, Miami Marlins leadoff hitter Luis Arias is carrying a uh, 398 average batting average so far this season, but he only ranks third in expected batting average. And um, I guess what's cool about that stat specifically, and maybe I'll zoom out just to avoid the, I'm sure that's kind of the same experience for everybody. Anyways, um, going back to expected batting average, um, there are two players actually that are ahead of him. And um, there it is either Freddie Freeman, Bo Bichette, Freddie Freeman, Ronald Cunha Jr., Ronald Cunha Jr., Corey Seager, or Corey Seager and Bo Bichette. Um, all of these guys are super high average guys um, at the top of uh, you know pretty successful offensive lineups. Um, but the importance of expected batting average, have you ever seen, you've been watching a baseball game, your guy is coming up the plate and he rips an absolute screamer. Uh, let's say it's Austin Riley rips an absolute screamer uh, down the third base line straight to the uh, left fielder on a frozen rope, he took two steps uh, and caught it. It was there to him in what seemed like 0.5 seconds. Um, and if he would have hit it anywhere else in any other trajectory, not trajectory, but direction, um, it would have been an extra base hit. Expected batting average is something uh, that baseball savant uh as in stat cast uh, tracks throughout the, you know, the last number of years and essentially is um, aggregating a ton of data points of balls that are being hit in different places um, and what is expected to uh, end up as a hit. So it's like they take the direction out of the equation and more how hard was a hit and what is the trajectory and like, where did it land um, probabilities of like how often that lands. So the answer, if you guys want to take a second to pause this video to answer on your own, the answer is Ronald Acuna Jr. and Corey Seager. And why I want to bring up Ronald Acuna Jr. and Corey Seager and kind of like differentiating between uh, Luis Arias, if you like, regardless of like what fantasy um, you know uh, format you're playing on, Luis Arias is uh, <laughs> he's hitting for 400, but like why isn't he still a top five uh, player at his across his positions? And it's because he just doesn't have any power behind him. He's not getting those extra base hits. So if we look at his 
Um, his actual his, so his, his real uh, batting average right now is 398. His expected batting average is 338, which is a complete 60 point difference. And why I bring this up and why I think this is important to talk about Luis Arias is because I'm gonna go ahead and hit the pause button here. So uh, if I go over to Statcast and I look at Luis Arias. Uh, if you guys can see, so share this tab instead. All right, cool. Um, I'm looking at his expected batting average. He's third behind Corey Seager and Ronald Cunha Jr. Ronald Cunha Jr. is only, or he's hitting 352, or he's hitting 327, but his expected batting average is 352. So even though he has a um, a lower actual average, he's hitting it so hard into particular places where he's considered like I would consider him an unlucky player, even though he has been most productive bat so far uh, this fantasy season. And the opposite, so. Um, Corey Seager obviously has been killing it since he's come off of the IL. Uh, his average right now is a 358, which is wild. Uh, but his expected batting average is only, or is, is I say only, they're still abs- These are the top of the food chain, top, top guys. So I'm not taking value away from these people. I'm just trying to, uh, explain kind of the concepts and how I look at determining, uh, more, more sustainable players compared to flashes in the pan. So if I look at Corey Seager, and it's just an example, like he's currently hitting 358, but his expected batting average is 347. So this is a player who uh, is super injury prone, has been absolutely killing it since he's come off the IL. He's been playing on a you know offense that's really, really productive. Most yeah, best offense so far in Major League Baseball to start the year. But to me, it's like, Ronald Acuna Jr., though, if you're someone who is big game hunting, um, this is more about Luis Arias, but like just going into it in order. Ronald Acuna Jr., uh, if he's on your roster or if he is not on your roster, if you're someone who big game hunts, uh, you're in a league that trades big names left and right, um, I would expect Ronald Acuna Jr., even though he's already the number one guy, uh, to even be more productive because he is supposed to, you know, he his expecting batting average is actually, you add 25 points on top of that, um, and he's just going to even further uh, surpass his peers. Next, um, with Corey Seager, you're a Corey Seager owner. I'm, this is an opportunity where I think like he's at a uh, super high value and just giving his, um, um, his injury history. I think that his overall, uh, trade value is probably the highest right now. And just the overall again, concept of his, again, his injury prone history. I think this would be a good time, um, for you to think about trading him. If you were able to get back some absolute studs and only some absolute studs, if not, you leave Corey Seager on your roster and you'd be happy about it. Um, just one of those things where it's like, he hasn't had a healthy roster. He hasn't had a whole, a healthy entire year, uh, since I was a sophomore in uh, college, which would have been 2015. Um, so it's just one of those things where, um, you know, I would consider maybe moving him while he's absolutely at his highest value, I think right now, um, because of his hot streak. Same thing with Lewis Reyes and kind of like preluding to that. I think Lewis, Lewis, uh, Arias is at his absolute highest, um, peak. He has a lot of all-star votes coming in for him because he's maintaining that incredible uh right around 400 average uh but that average of 398 really from a fantasy baseball perspective and how it translates to um you know winning games uh and being a really productive fantasy player is uh, not necessarily the same it's like uh if you ever played football th- that was my sport i actually never played baseball I was horrible at it my dad was really really good at it uh but like just couldn't get, I couldn't get past the concept of striking out and that being okay. Uh, so I got, went to a sport where like, if I got mad, I just hit someone in the next play and whatever. That's, that's how I problem solved. But anyways, uh, here we are. So Luis Arias, I just think is, is the absolute highest, um, of his highest value that he's going to have, um, right now. And if I had an opportunity to trade him, it's just a bonus that he has uh, several uh, position eligibilities and everything. And hopefully next time I will speak less than nine minutes on the very first question. Uh, And if you are at this point where it's like, oh, I answered the first question and then it went on without me uh, and I'm on number two, three, and maybe now um, just restart (laughs) the uh, the quiz on your own. And uh, I promise I'll be faster (laughs) through uh, two through uh, two, two through eight. So um, those are my thoughts. Luis Arias is the um, uh, leading batting average in baseball. His expected batting average is actually in the third place. I think that he's going to uh, digress, and I don't think that's just. I just don't think that he's going to be able to sustain, be able to sustain that moving forward. This is his highest trade value. So the answer, Ronald Acuna Jr. and Corey Seager is your answer. And then we're on to number two. Uh, who is leading Major League Baseball in total bases? 
with 175. And um, it's actually, <clears throat> I, I made this, uh, this PowerPoint before they, uh, the, the games went on last night. So this is uh, slightly adjusted, but the first place person is still a first place person. You have Shohei Otani, uh, who's having an absolute great year with the Angels. Ron Acuna Jr., who we just talked about, is the most productive, um, you know, fantasy baseball player in all of Major League Baseball. <coughs> Cough. Um, but he is, is stealing a ton of bases. That's not something that gets attributed uh, in total bases. But he's, you know, again, hitting so well that he's probably up at the top of being the leadoff hitter of one of the best offenses in baseball. Freddie Freeman, who is uh, constantly a total base monster. Um, he is the top five going back over the last decade. He's always in the top five in total bases, just super productive player, uh, death by volume. Uh, but you know, that's, that's candidate. And similarly, Bo Bichette, <coughs> different body type, but Bo Bichette and Freddie Freeman just seem like they're such similar players, similar types in the batting or, uh, spots in the batting order, both going to hit around 25 to 30 home runs, uh, with a ton of volume play every single day, uh, this, that, and the other, but this is really an opportunity to, uh, hit on, uh, so, uh you know, show a lot of love, uh, towards someone as, you know, someone who is expected to do and be everything for their team. Uh, the answer is Shohei Otani. And what's cool about Shohei Otani and I, he gets talked a lot about, but not uh, about enough. Um, so he's leading, the league in major league, major league baseball on total basis, but he actually is also leading, um, you know, the angels overall and at bats, hits, triples, home runs, runs, RBIs, average on base percentage, slugging OPS and stolen bases. And on top of that being the ace of the pitching staff, he is also leading an in innings pitch whip ERA and strikeouts. And last night he went another seven innings uh, pitched um, with 12 strikeouts. So absolutely a mutant phenomena of our time. And if you still haven't really made your way around to um, watching Shohei Otani uh, pitch, and I'm still showing the wrong. Oh my gosh. <coughs> this has been a train wreck so far. Um, boy, I understand if you quit, I'll be right there. I, I gosh, this sucks. Okay. Anyways, um, Shohei Otani, absolute special uh, specimen to watch. That is the answer. And we're moving on to number three. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a, uh, here are the stats. Who is the person? And I like to call this, uh, segment. Who is that? Pokey Reese, yeah, like P Pokemon, Pokey Reese. Uh, they give you kind of a picture of like a silhouette of uh, what the Pokemon was. And you're supposed to guess it just by it's like a silhouette. Well, this is not the player silhouette, but <clears throat> over the last 30 innings pitch. So over the last month, um, this person has pitched 30 innings and he has uh, earned 45 strikeouts with a 0 0.60 ERA and a 0 0.90 whip. And the hint is, is that this player traditionally is known as a slow starter, um, but he always finishes super strong. So someone who is drafted traditionally within the top 150, who is expected to be a super productive pitcher for you. Uh, but, you know, it starts off slow. And I've been saying all year, got to hold on to this guy. Uh, he's going to eventually come around. It's just, this is what he does. He's a uh, super warm, warm weather guy. And you know, even though he's playing in a warm weather, that's a hint uh, that he's, you know, got things going for him now. And this is not the time to trade him. Like at, if he's not at his highest peak, uh, he is going to sustain this highest peak. And this is not an asset that you get rid of uh, now that he's had, you know, four straight really awesome games. So if I'm giving all of those hints, um, I would probably narrow it down to uh, Luis Castillo and Blake Snell being the two guys that usually start off slow and end hot. Um, traditionally, U.S. Luis Castillo uh, with the Cincinnati Reds. Now the Mariners kind of like every year in his career starts off slow, ends up uh, being, you know, an all-star caliber player towards yeah, probably the back half of the season. Um, same thing with Blake Snell. And the answer is Blake Snell and for all of you who uh, used my draft sheet and, uh, you know, we're Blake Snow, uh, break Snell uh, investors and buyers. Um, he actually pitches today, but this is kind of what I want to show just from 2022. And I didn't care to go into all of the years before, but in 2022, just looking at ERA, just alone, like taking away his strikeouts and all these different things uh, in May, he had a 4.80 it's in 2022, May uh, ERA. 4.80, June 6.20, July 2.81, August 2.81, September 2.17, October 
zero. So he's just somebody who just gets better and better throughout the year. Um, you know, more and more, you know, time and pitches on the mound uh, seems to uh, really settle in. And the off season, um, you know, it takes time. It's like if you, if you haven't snowboarded, if you're in the Midwest and you go through the whole summer and that first time getting back on the snowboard between uh, then and last January or whatever, um, it takes a couple of runs to like, refire those muscles that you haven't been using uh since last year so anyways blake snell um my or my thought process is he's at his highest probably uh he's at a very high trade value right now and a lot of people are like man he's burned me this entire year he's had four straight starts this is when i can unload him to get something solid to me it's somebody to hold on to because there's not many pitchers overall in baseball that are allowed to throw 100 pitches every single game uh and is going to just about double his uh his strike outs per innings pitched um, on his days that he's going. So to me, Blake Snell, awesome. Hold on to him. Believe in him. I sure do. Uh, Blake Snell, San Diego Padres is the answer there. So on to question number four. Um, there are two active batters right now uh, that rank uh, in the top 10 in both sweet spots percentage and solid contact rate. One is Corey Seager, and that's not much of a surprise. That's not somebody that you're going to be able to trade for. The other is someone who I guarantee is most I guarantee is available uh, to you in your fantasy baseball league, regardless of the format, as a free agent, and that's what's valuable here. So two active batters, minimum 158 plate appearances. Um, let's talk about these two stats, sweet spot percentage. And the definition of sweet spots percentage is a, um, a ball that is its launch angle is anywhere between eight degrees and 32 degrees, uh, you know, off from the plane of the plate. So that is the sweet spots percentage. If you hit any, a ball in between uh, that plane, you're most likely going to have a positive result. And that's what uh, StatCast has um, yeah, deemed kind of the, uh, the perfect region. Now, if we go down to, um, looking at solid contact rate, solid contact rate is a ball hit in the air, but with it's, it's literally the definition is a ball hit in the air with decent likelihood of an extra base hit. So it's a super, uh, high, uh, like the ambiguity of that stat is, uh, is high. Like that doesn't really tell you much again, solid contact rate definition ball hit in the air with decent likelihood of extra base hit. So I said earlier, stat cast is like specifically tasked with, tracking every ball hit into the field of play, um, its trajectory, its, um, its, its, uh, its exit velocity and all these different things. And then like, what was its, what was its, uh, uh, its angle hit? And then what was its exit, exit velocity, but also what was the, uh, final result of that ball put into play? And, aggregating all and collecting all of those data points through the last couple of years, they've just determined solid contact rate um, as something that depending on what trajectory it was hit um, and, um, and how hard it was hit, it's kind of a sliding scale. So if a ball uh, is hit at um, let's say 90 miles an hour into the infield, um, it would, it, you would need a lower, um, uh, you would need a lower trajectory. So like if, if you're looking for something between 26 and 30 uh, or 38 and 32 degrees um, for a, uh, for a expected hit in general, um, if you hit a ball that was uh, 90 miles per hour, you would need it to be less than that 32 degrees to make sure that it what didn't turn into a uh, fly out per se. So it's kind of a slight sliding scale. The harder that you hit the ball, the more my, the extra miles per hour, like every mile per hour, after 95 miles per hour, um, you essentially get uh, a like two degree grace um, moving forward past 32 degrees. That would be considered a um, high likelihood of having a uh, an extra base hit. So anyways, grabbing that all together, Ryan Noda, Stuart Fairchild, Nick Prado, and Jack Sawinski. Um, this player plays every single day and hits every day between the one and the three hole. Um, so that pretty much uh, eliminates none of those so far on a team that, uh, you know, has to play their players every day, trying to gain, uh, add trade value to them as much as possible. Um, and the answer is Ryan Noda and why that's valuable to you if you're short on first base or outfielders uh, specifically. Um, he is a player who, again, who's going to hit between the one and three hole every single day. And uh, he fits, he's the only other batter um, that are, that's active between him and Corey Seager that match in the top 10 in all of baseball between these two categories. So the answer is Ryan Noda. And we're on 
to question number six. So this is a player um, who uh, we're going to talk about a, uh, I, my notes are kind of messed up, but anyways, what starting pitcher leads major league baseball and expected batting average against. So we mentioned that stat before, um, you know, what is uh, all the balls put into play? Uh, if a ball is screamed again, we hit a ball that screams directly to the right fielder. They took two steps to the left and uh, caught you for an out. Any other direction, uh, you know, within the field of play, that most likely would have been a hit and or even like a, a, an extra base hit that rolled to the wall. So of all of the balls being put into play um, with, and taking into account expected batting average, what starting pitcher um, is has the least incurred, um, you know, expected batting average against the options are Spencer Strider, um, Shohei Otani with the Angels, Joe Ryan with the Minnesota Twins, and Luis Castillo with the Seattle Mariners. And obviously these are all super high strikeout guys. And I think that the, um, the importance here is, um, you know, making sure that you are always having guys on your roster. The most sustainable pitchers are obviously the ones that have anything with a three something ERA and below. Uh, but if you can have plus strikeouts, that always makes up a huge difference, less balls in the play, less balls, uh, less balls, uh, or less runners on base against you that eventually turn into earned runs, earned runs against you turn into losses. And those are the bonus points that really keep us from, uh, winning fantasy games. So the answer again, and just to kind of give them some extra love again is Shohei Otani with the Los Angeles angels. Um, he is absolutely killing it this season. I said already before his last, uh, his game last night against the Dodgers, seven innings pitched, um, 12 strikeouts. And I think he gave up either zero or one run. Um, I was doing fantasy baseball content stuff while that game was on next to me. Uh, again, reminder that MLB TV is, uh, free and because they couldn't come to an agreement with all of the, uh, TV broadcasters, um, across the league. So if you're not watching your, uh, your own players on your fantasy team play every day, um, it's just because you didn't want to, and you decided to click on something on Netflix, which is something I do as well. But, uh, anyways, there's no reason not to be able to watch your favorite out of market players because it is truly free to you. And one of the you know most important assets and things that I pay for throughout the year. So Answer is Shohei Otani. If you're a Shohei Otani owner, you give him up for nothing, as we've talked about before. If you do not have Shohei Otani on your roster, and somehow someone was a, like you know willing and able uh, to trade him away, he literally is worth your top three players all back for one because he is a top ten pitcher. He's a top. He's the number one most productive individual bat so far as in the league so far this year at, with his total base numbers. Um, he leads his, his own team in stolen bases. He's doing it in every category, and he's the ace on the roster. The only knock against him with pitching is he only gets to pitch one per six days, and um, you know that's because the Angels are finally healthy this year. They can stay healthy going the playoffs. They'll be scary. They're always, always supposed to be scary, um, but yeah, that's the overall point and value of this question. So Shohei Tani is the answer, and we're moving. On so this one I said before, uh, you know, name name this pitcher. I'm going to give you some stats, and uh, we're going to differentiate and figure out kind of between who are the options. Um, you know, let's uncover someone who's more valuable than what their currently fantasy status is. Uh, so <clears throat> this pitcher specifically does not have a winning record, and his ERA is at a 4.70. So both numbers, like you know, not super good. But if you click on anyone's fantasy profile, those are the first two things that a lot of people look at. What are your record and what is your ERA? <laughs> and the next you probably look at innings pitch and strikeouts if you're me um, and a lot of these other stats. But if you uncover and look at some of these, um, you know, other super important stats, again, that kind of exist in other websites, it's, it requires a little more extra work, a little extra digging. Um, he ranks, this pitcher specifically ranks sixth and expecting bat expected batting average against with a 209 and he's 11th in all of major league baseball in strikeout percentage and i will also say this is my notes on the side that he is only 14 percent owned in all of fantasy baseball leagues so if we look across the uh options and that kind of gives away uh you know the answer overall the answer is like surprisingly enough um Edward Cabrera. Edward Cabrera is on a roster that's not uh, super consistent with run support. It's a game, or it's a team that's 11 games above 500, um, and is massively like outproducing their expectations in the NL East. Uh, but Edward Cabrera is going out when he is going out. Um, his expected batting average against is again sixth in all of Major League Baseball, and he's striking out a lot of people. 
um, you know, per, so every the, the overlying like, you know, stats that's attached to his name um, are not sustainable. He's going to be more and more productive. But why I bring this up is he's someone who just had a shoulder impingement, was put on the 15 day IL um, just last week. And he is expected to uh, come off in the minimum stay with that. And he, again, is available and he's available in uh, 86% of all fantasy baseball leagues. So if you're a weak at pitcher or if you're really good at pitcher, um, I would consider finding a way to get him onto your roster. And if anything, slotting him into your IL, if someone dropped him, um, would be super valuable and something that I absolutely uh, did. So Edward Cabrera is the answer there. Submitting. And we're on to... The next one, um, two closers so far in all of Major League Baseball with a minimum of 11 saves have yet to blow a save opportunity in 2023. And the options are uh, Felix Batista and Will Smith. Felix Batista um, is probably, he's going to be a reliever of the year um, this year with Baltimore Baltimore Orioles, me being a Reds fan, um, is the absolute dream. I'm obviously running a, I'm writing a uh, super dream high with the Reds' current production and winning 11 games in a row. Um, but the what the Baltimore Orioles have done with the roster, uh, given their payroll, is super special and something that every baseball team wishes they could replicate. Um, if you just give them enough time and you give general managers enough time to really get through the entire rebuild process and do it their way and stick with it. So often do franchises, um, they'll hire in a general manager to come in during a rebuild um tag them with all of the, you know, an owner will tag that general manager, um, that skipper with all of the losing. And the second that it's time to get back, uh, you know, into the play of things and get back into, uh, you know, competing for, you know, postseason different things, uh, they'll just, they'll, they'll offload that general manager, hit them with all of uh, the, the poor stats that was the rebuild and then uh, move forward with, you know, some more notable name, um, and then go on winning there. And then like, they get all the credit for taking over this roster that rebuilt it for three or five years. And uh, now all of a sudden they're heroes. Well, that is the Orioles, except they stuck with their guys. And it's really showing the importance of giving people an opportunity to really rebuild again <laughs> over a uh, long period of time. Because it, it, when you're drafting um, players, unlike any of the other sports, you're drafting a baseball, most first round picks, second round picks, I, all these draft, all these kids that are draft being drafted, um, no one produces within their first couple of years unless you're like a, uh, a Mike Leeton, Mike. I'm forgetting one of the pitchers for the Reds uh, came straight from Arizona straight into our starting lineup and was there for a long time. He's blonde. He stole stuff from a, like a Coles or something in downtown Cincinnati. And I can picture his face, but anyways, um, it's just different. You, you, you build your team differently. Um, the Baltimore Orioles really impressive. I've left myself a hundred or an hour or one minute, 40 seconds to talk about all the other options. Will Smith having a resurgent career, not a big strikeout guy, uh, but has a super duper low ERA um, with uh, the Texas Rangers since he's taken over that closer role. David Bednar is untouchable to begin the year and it just hasn't had as many opportunities um, as of late since the pirates have kind of cooled off. Devin Williams is perfect uh, so far this season. Um, you know, again, kind of in a situation where the Brewers seem to blow people out or um, uh, or lose. <laughs> so, like, he just hasn't had a lot of opportunities. Camila Duvall, uh, Craig Kimbrell, Alexis Diaz, and Carlos Estevez. And uh, I will answer the, – the answer to that question is uh, Alexis Diaz and Carlos Estevez, um, both perfect so far this year. So Alexis Diaz with 20 saves, um, Carlos Estevez with 19 saves, no blown saves. And uh, Alexis Diaz is striking people out at a 50% clip. Um, Carlos Estevez is striking people out. I think it's like a 36 um, or a 37% clip, super duper productive players and their guys that I just think that because they started out as free agents, non-drafted people um, that they're still probably available and kind of undervalued. Anyone who has like an Alexis Diaz uh, probably thinks to themselves like, Oh, this guy, like these are going to cool off. The Reds are going to cool off. Not a big market team. Um, it might be someone who uh, you know, either of these players might be someone that you can maybe get away, uh, get some, get, get them away from another roster without, um, really giving up a ton, but providing a ton of value. So submit your answer, Alexis Diaz, Carlos Estevez. And uh, next, we're finishing with uh, this. Is our last question. We're finishing with a another starting pitcher, kind of like who 
is it depending on the stat? Um, what starting pitcher uh, minimum seventy innings pitched has surrendered less total bases than innings pitched so far in this uh, year 2023. So what that question means is, um, let's just say we're looking at Marcus Stroman with the Cubs, uh, Framber Valdez with the Houston Astros, Shohei Otani with the Angels, and Sunny Gray who's having an awesome, um, you know, resurgence, um, come back healthy year and hope that that continues. He's got to root for with the Minnesota Twins. So let's just say that since, uh, you know, the letter A, Marcus Stroman gives up a home run uh, to the first batter of the ball game, and then he puts down uh, batters two, three, and four to end the inning. What he has to do is pitch the next five innings pitched while not giving up any hits in order to have pitched more innings than than total bases given up. That's how spec like this. This stat is wild. This is very special, and this is also someone who has pitched, um, you know, a, a ton of innings so far this year. He's been uh, pretty much their ace, number one or two in this rotation. Um, and the only person that has now been eliminated from uh, that, given those hints, would be Shohei Otani, only because he isn't allowed to pitch as many innings because they have a six man rotation. So it's down to Framber Valdez, Sonny Gray, and Marcus Stroman. And if you haven't answered yet. You can welcome to pause, but the answer is uh, Marcus Stroman with the Chicago Cubs is having a crazy year. I had earlier in the season, um, I mentioned that if I was a Marcus Stroman over owner, that this is an awesome time that I would get rid of him because I think that he is at his peak. Um, this was like a month or so into the baseball season. Um, I still think that it's just one of those things where you like, so you look at Marcus Stroman, he's had 98.2 innings pitched so far this year. And he has given up only 95 total bases, which again is crazy. Um, though he has in his saving grace so far, he's got a lot of run support. He's earned a lot of wins uh, and that's been good from a fantasy perspective, but looking at the underlying stats, what kind of scares me only a little bit is Marcus Stroman um, through 98 innings pitched uh, only has 83 strikeouts. So he has 15 less strikeouts uh, than innings pitched. So he's not putting as many people away. There's still balls being put into play. It's just that when balls are getting put into play, they're just never getting that solid contact um, against him. He's And if he is giving up hits, they're singles at most. Um, but if you, you would assume that if this player has given up less total bases than innings pitched, that his, um, his whip would be incredible. And it is really, really good, but I would expect it to be below one. And it's actually a 1.02. So he's walking people um, onto base. He's not getting touched hardly at all from hits, but he is giving up free passes. So this is someone who is absolutely killing it so far this year. And I'm really proud of uh, how consistent his career kind of up and downs um, that he's been through a super tough guy. But for me as a fantasy baseball owner, not getting those bonus points from strikeouts is um, kind of the, the easy way to look at it from a points perspective. But again, conceptually, more batters that are putting balls into play, meaning not striking out, um, is just more opportunities to incur negative points against you and sort of implode. So to me, I think this Marcus Stroman is at his highest value that he's going to be um, throughout the rest of the season. If it was me, I would look to um, you know trade him being super high. He said uh, these stats kind of are similar with Max Freed. Max Freed has just done this for so long and kind of like carried the stat line as well for so long across his career. Um, it's just that he's done it way more consistently um, and he's hurt right now. So Marcus Stroman is the answer. It's very, very, very impressive. And that's the end of the quiz. Ended up being, I can't make a video that's less than 30 <laughs> minutes long. Uh, I try my best, but it's just about impossible. So anyways, um, you know, this is the first time that I've done this. I'm doing it anyways for another website that's paying me um, to, to do said thing. And I love doing this anyways, but if it was helpful to you, uh, let me know in the comments, um, obviously like, and, uh, and subscribe and do all those different things that helps me, um, you know, be able to grow my own uh, thing and do things the way that I want to here on uh, YouTube in a different way with fantasy baseball on deck. You guys know everything that I'm all about. Uh, Data-driven decision-making, we learn together. Um, I don't want to tell you what to think. We're going to teach you how to think and so that we can make better uh, data-driven decisions um, together and problem be able to problem-solve on your own so that you can you know, run your fantasy baseball team through the roof instead of into the ground uh, because of you know easy mistakes that can be made. Anyways, that's the end of the show. Really appreciate all of the support, all of the love um, that you guys show me constantly. And um, that's the end of the video, the end of the show. So thanks for everybody. I will uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.